Um, so we're going to move on to Tom. So I'm going to give you a brief introduction, if I may. Mm -hmm. So Tom Greenwood is the co-founder of Whole Grain Digital, a certified B Corp and green, true green trailblazer in the digital agency world. Tom is known uh, for writing and speaking about how business, uh, design, and web technology can be part of the solution to environmental issues, and is author of the book Sustainable Web, web Design, as well as the Sustainable Business Newsletter Oxymoron. I'll just try to translate it quickly for um, our Italian audience as well. Tom Greenwood è il cofondatore di Whole Grain Digital, una delle prime verissime eh, digital agency eh, veramente green, eh, certificata B Corp, è conosciuto per eh, le sue contribuzioni sia scritte che interventi e eh, discorsi legati a come le aziende, i business, il design e le tecnologie web possono effettivamente contribuire ed essere parte della soluzione per far fronte a molti dei problemi ambientali. È autore del libro Sustainable Web Design e anche della newsletter Oxymoron. Um, oggi eh, Tom ci parlerà di come far crescere e portare alla scalabilità le imprese sostenibili. Uh, so Tom, you're going to talk about how to uh, scale sustainable businesses and uh, the floor is yours. Thanks. So, yeah, I can't remember who it was that asked me to talk about how to scale a sustainable business. And, and I said yes. And then afterwards I thought, what do I know about scaling a sustainable digital business? <laughs> um, so that's what I'm going to talk about. I, I've had to give this some thought. Um, um, so Holgren Digital is a company that my wife, Benita, and I started in 2007. So we've been going 16 and a half years. Um, Initially, just the two of us. Now, Whole Grain Digital is about 25 people. So compared to Google, we haven't really scaled. Compared to where we started, we've <laughs> scaled quite a bit. Um, so it's a, it's, a relative, it's a relative game. Um, but we started very much with a focus on sustainability. Um, we had a passion for sustainability, for design, for technology. And, and also, there was a question uh, in my mind in particular about how do we how do we make business as a as a as a a way of doing things as humans as a way of trading with each other um, sustainable? I, there was a lot of talk in the environmental movement around like business is the cause of all the problems, and I thought yeah that's probably true to some extent. But then what's the solution? Are we going to abolish business, or is there some other way? And so Whole Grain Digital was partly an experiment to see, could we run a business in a way that was more sustainable? And what would that look like? And how hard could it be? Um, quite hard, um, <laughs> it turned out. Um, but that was why we started. And we started really with two pillars of sustainability. The first pillar was, let's try to run the operations of the business in a way that's environmentally and socially responsible. And the second pillar was, if we're going to be a design agency, then let's try and work on projects that we feel are having a positive impact in the world. Because if people are paying us money to try and influence people, spread information, change behaviors and things like that through the internet, then we want those to be aligned with our core mission as a company. So we had these two pillars of sustainability to begin with. We didn't have digital sustainability as a pillar. Um, one of the reasons that we decided to be a digital agency as opposed to um, doing something else. Um, Venita and I both studied, Venita studied electronics engineering. I studied engineering product design, so physical things. The um, reason we decided to go into digital was partly because we thought there was no environmental impact of digital technology. Um, so this could be a, like a great future where we can digitalize everything, dematerialize everything. Jerry's already told us how foolish that is as an idea. Um, <laughs> so, but we were young and naive and we didn't know any better. So, um, so that was part of the reason we decided to go in the digital direction. Um, and it was only through our journey of trying to run the company in a sustainable way that we, we learned about the fact that digital does have an environmental impact. And this actually came about when we started looking at the B Corp assessment process. And it asked the question, how do you measure and reduce the environmental impact of the products you manufacture. Um, and, and, and having previously, before we started Whole Grain, I'd done life cycle assessments of physical products. I knew what that was about. And I looked at this question and I thought, ooh, how did I never ask this question myself? Why did it take all these years for someone else to ask me? 
So then I asked other people I knew and they said, oh, no, 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 there's no environmental impact of digital. So you don't, don't worry about that. And I thought that doesn't make sense. So I asked the B Corp assessment people and they said, oh, no, no, digital companies, you leave that section blank because you don't make real things. So there's no environmental impact, leave it blank. So we left it blank. Um, and then it really bothered me because no one had provided me any evidence. It was just an assumption that everybody seemed to be making. And that was really the beginning of whole grain digital adding a third pillar to what we do. And that third pillar is digital sustainability because we started going and researching for ourselves. Like what is the environmental impact of digital? We started discovering all these sorts of things that Jerry's just been talking about. And, and we realized that actually not only must we do something about this because it's the right thing to do and it aligns with our values as a business, but actually we must do something about it because if we, we're in a perfect position to actually try and influence change um, as a company in the digital sector that already talks about digital, sorry, sustainability in other areas. So what's this got to do with scaling? So like I said, we started with two people. We now have about 25. You could argue that that's scaling. Um, I've actually always tried to resist growth. Uh, the agency world is strange. There's a lot of bravado in the agency world. Everybody's always showing off about how great they are, how many awards they've won, how many employees they have, what their turnover is. And everyone's always trying to like, make you feel like you need to grow. It's all about how many, you know, you need more people, more turnover. Um, and that's never really appealed to me. And so I've always tried to resist growth. Um, and Vanessa will testament, testify to this, that I, I would like the company to be probably two people. Um, <laughs> now we have 25. So my growth strategy was zero growth. And we now have, <laughs> we're now uh, 12 times the size and from where we started. And, and I, part of this, I think, is just do good work and people will want more of it. And, and actually, when we've hired more people over the years, it's been because we've got existing clients who want more work from us and we can't serve them. So we have to hire more people. And I think that's, to me, that's a sign of success if we're doing things that are aligned with our values. Um, but people have always said, yeah, but if you grew more, if you actually stopped resisting it, you could have more positive impact in the world. If, you know, if whole grain grew faster, you could have more impact because you'd be a bigger company, you'd work with more clients, you'd have more resources. And I think to some extent, this may be true. Um, but we would also, I think, take our focus off the core of what we were trying to achieve. And we may end up actually having less positive impact because our focus would be on growth for the sake of growth, um, growing our revenue, growing profit margins, growing our headcount. Um, and so instead, what we've tried to do over the years is focus on growing impact rather than growing the size of the business. And I think for me, that's what growth is all about. I think as a small company, we can we can punch above our weight and we can create a lot of influence in in our industry without necessarily being Google. Um, and so uh, and I think there are one of the ways we've done this is try to share our journey very openly of everything that we've done, positive and negative in terms of the things we've learned, the mistakes we've made. Um, we really focused on trying to create content. So writing blogs, newsletters, giving talks to share as openly as we can the things that we've done and the things that we're learning from others so that other people can learn it as well. Because one of the things that we figured out, particularly not just in digital sustainability, but sustainability more broadly, is that if we do it as a small business, it, it might make us feel good, but it doesn't really matter. Like it's because the rest of society is not doing anything. We're just a drop in the ocean. But if we do it and we share that knowledge and we share the inspiration and the energy with other people and other people start doing the same things or maybe better than us even um, and maybe they even share back with us so that we can learn from them then we actually try to then we actually can create some momentum in in a positive direction and that's what we've been trying to do over the well over the last 16 years um, some examples of that are the the website carbon calculator that we created a number of years back really once we learned that there is an environmental impact of digital we learned um we figured out you know an approach of how we could actually calculate that in our own projects so that we could apply it to specific projects we're doing with our clients again it was like okay but 
we would need every web design agency to be doing this. And so that's why we created um, a tool that people could use to get them inspired and learn that this is a thing, but also open source the methodology, um, which has been talked about this morning. Um, it became the adopted as the sustainable web design method, which is now used by CO2.js and City Green. Um, so that's an example of how like we can do things as a small business, share them openly, collaborate with others, such as the Green Web Foundation, Mighty Bytes, Piano D, and actually start creating these ripples outward where more people learn, more people start doing things in a better way, and we learn from each other. Um, we also created, collaborated with others to create the Sustainable um, Web Manifesto a number of years ago. That was a similar kind of collaborative project to try and raise awareness in the, in the industry. And there's a number of organizations that have adopted that sort of as a principle within their organizations of how they approach digital projects. So it's another example of scaling the impact. Um, I wrote a book, Sustainable Web Design. Um, again, trying to share everything that we learned about design and development um, so that we gave everybody a head start in our industry because we sort of had to figure it out for ourselves when we realized there's an environmental impact. No one could really tell us what to do. What is the solution? Okay, we found the problem. What's the solution? And so our team had spent a lot of time trying to figure out solutions, find better ways of doing things. And we thought if everybody has to start from zero, this is going to take years, like no one's going to make progress. So. Um, so I wrote, I wrote the book, Sustainable Web Design, really, so that we could give everybody a head start and say, look, this is where we've got to start here. And, and hopefully you can learn, you can go further, you know, hopefully other people will share back, give, you know, uh, give talks, write blog posts, write more books. Um, and, and we can all progress together. And I, it's been really inspiring to see how many, particularly in the UK, how many agencies and freelancers in the digital sector have now started embedding sustainability as one of their core principles of how they approach digital projects um, where you know six seven years ago we couldn't we could basically not find anybody who even knew anything about it and now there's people who are actively promoting it and shouting about it and sharing knowledge and and even as much as it sometimes frustrates me for all the wrong reasons um, doing better work than we are in sustainable digital sustainability you know we, we we wake up some days of the week and we see this thing that another company's done and we think oh my goodness they're they're ahead of us now and <laughs> but that's a good thing because it means that now the whole industry or well not the whole industry but more of the industry is moving forward and it also means we have people to learn from as well um so so i think for me scaling in a sustainable digital business is more in the true spirit of sustainability is really about scaling impact rather than scaling the corporation itself. Um, that's also affected our service model. So we've always been a design and development agency. That's what we do, design and development projects and then ongoing um, continuous improvement and maintenance as you'd expect. But in recent years, we've also been getting requests to do consultancy for companies that would never hire us to build a website. So they have their own in-house digital teams or um, or they have another agency that they work with and they want to keep that agency, but their agency doesn't know anything about the, the sustainability aspect of digital. And so that's where we've started offering consultancy services that we can provide education and training and, um, and, and consult on their projects and give them advice on what they're doing and help steer it without actually doing the project ourselves. So I think that's another way that we can scale that impact where we don't want to be a 250 person agency doing like huge projects necessarily, but we can work with some big global agency that's doing a big project for a multinational corporation that we might not want to work with. But actually, if we can, if we can educate their team and then they go and embed those principles in every project that they do, that actually can have a huge impact. So, so I think there are lots of ways that we can, we can kind of go through the side door of scaling impact rather than always just thinking like big is better. Um, and the next step really for whole grain digital, I think is, is trying to join this all up, but the name whole grain, as you may, as you may know, like, you know, it basically means integrale. Um, and it's, it's about everything being holistic and wholesome and good for you. Um, and so that's why environmental issues have always been important to us at whole grain. But I think, 
what we're really seeing now is that like the sustainability side of digital is not a purely technical issue. It is also a very much a human issue. Um, you know, Jerry touched on this, but the, the, the whole industry is designed to, to be addictive and we're consuming more and more data. That's, and that's not good for our health, our human health, either our mental health, our physical health, our culture, you know, the way we interact with each other, our community. And I think actually we can make everything super energy efficient, but if we don't address the very human issues of like our relationship with digital, we'll actually never truly solve the problem. So I think the next sort of the next step for whole grain is exploring what does that really mean? Like how can we actually take a more holistic approach to digital sustainability and actually think more about the the community side and the, the mental health side and and embed those things into our design principles and our projects and the education work that we do as well. Um, so that's sort of where we're going, which and I probably should have been at yesterday's uh, <laughs> event in Torino to learn about those more holistic issues. But um, um, yeah, so hopefully that's been interesting. I've got 13 seconds and I think I'm done. Are there any questions? Ci sono delle domande per Tom? Uh, their emissions and reduce them. Yeah. Sorry, just uh, can, can people online hear the questions? Should I repeat it? Or it's okay. No means that they don't hear it or yeah. okay. So uh, the you you can can you repeat yeah. Uh, saying that, yeah. Yeah. So, so the question was about what's the motivation for our clients when they hire us, um, and whether ESG is one of the motivations behind it, and um, what is it they're thinking about when they are asking to look at digital sustainability and digital emissions. Um, so it's a bit of a mixed bag. So some of our clients um, don't come to us asking for anything to do with digital sustainability. They come to us for other reasons. Um, because they think that we're good at a particular thing, you know, design development um, that that works for their organization. Often, they think that we're aligned with their values as an organization in a general sense. We would do a lot of work with with purpose-led businesses, with charities. We do some public sector work. Um, so often, they like the the alignment of values, but they often don't have much awareness of digital sustainability. So it's often us trying to educate them. That this is like this is also something we should add to your project as a as a as an approach, um, and why it's good for them that they will get benefit from it. But we also, I mentioned, we do some consultancy work with with other companies, and and those in those cases they're specifically coming to us because of the digital sustainability aspect, and in those cases it is often sort of. CSR or ESG related, that there's somebody in the organization, whether it's a sustainability manager or the CEO, somebody has said to the marketing department or the digital department, you need to tell me what you're doing about climate change. And then the marketing or the digital department says, oh no, <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> what are you talking about? Digital doesn't have any environmental impact. And, and then they have to go and figure it out and they often, well, not often, but sometimes they find us and they say, can you help? And that's the motivation. Altre yeah. domande, any other questions? Okay, I have a question for you, Tom. So um, I think I was very excited about your talk today uh, because I had one main question, you know, which was, uh, does sustainable growth exist? And I think that today you made it very clear that it does exist. And it's uh, probably mostly a matter of perspectives and culture. Um, so I'm curious to know if this is also like one way to put it and maybe uh, that like speaks to you and maybe it's also what is driving actually your key metric of growth, which is impact. 
and uh, is the fact that like we today um, have a culture right and a perspective uh, that pushes us to see sustainability as something driven by for example degrowth right mm. and as long as we see the world in this way of course we're going to continue talking about degrowth rather than talking about alternative growth or a different way of growing is this the perspective and the culture that you think really like grew like whole grain is this the way that you are trying like now to promote the idea of sustainable growth or are there other ways you think that better represent your idea of sustainable growth that's yeah okay that's a really that's a really hard question because i think sustainable growth has the wrong implication it implies mm -hmm. that we can keep growing in the conventional sense and exactly. make it sustainable which isn't isn't what i believe degrowth i think a bit like jerry i think it's sort of where we need to go but i also think it's not an attractive mm -hmm. proposition um and i also think it's sort of telling us where we don't want to go mm -hmm. rather than telling us where we do want to go so i don't really have the full answer but the, the analogy that the the analogy that I keep in my head is when I was when I was 16 I went mountain biking in the Alps and we went down this really rocky trail downhill trail and the guide we were with said to us it's really it's really difficult to ride this trail and there's lots of big boulders if you look at the rock you will hit the rock because the bike always goes where you're looking so whatever you do, don't look at the rock you don't want to hit. Always look at the gap. Find a gap, look at it. The wheels will go through it. You'll get to the bottom. And I, th I did get to the bottom. Um, <laughs> and I think that's it, it's been advice that I've like held with me. And I think that's where we need to go as a society. That we need to like degrowth is the rock because it's got growth in the title, right? And sustainable growth is another rock, over, like this rock there and the rock there. And we need to find the gap between the two. And it's something that probably doesn't have the word growth in it. But I don't know what that is. I, I genuinely don't have the answer. And do you have a feeling of what could be the driver that will change this perspective? I, I think the driver may be, um, maybe just humanity waking up to what's really important. I think we've, you know, we've been living through an age of materialism and mental health has been declining through that age. And I think at some point we have to, uh, well, I think at some point we will as, as, a, as a society start feeling like, actually, you know what, screw this. <laughs> I wanna just focus on the things that matter. Um, you know, spending time with friends, family, um, doing things locally, spending time in nature. Um, and, and I, you know, I don't know how that will happen, but I think just it may just happen naturally. But that's just me being hopeful. <laughs> exactly. It happened for you, your wife, and the whole Green Digital. So yeah. hopefully it's going to continue spreading. Thank you so much. If there are no more questions. I have one question. You mentioned uh, your involvement on operational sustainability. What do you mean by that? Do you have examples? Uh, on what, sir? Uh, operationally uh, sustainable. Being uh, sustainable uh, on the... Ah, yeah, yeah. Being sustainable, it was a question about being sustainable on the operation side. On the operation side. Like, yeah, so um, being sustainable on the operation side means like how we run the business day to day. So how we um, set up our office space, how we travel, what type of equipment we use, um, how we manage our waste, energy, these sorts of like day to day running of the business. And so um, an example of some, like things we've done on that level um we we introduced a no fly policy at one point um we re so we came here to italy without flying um because we realized that a third of our emissions were flying and we're a web design agency why do we need to fly like most of our clients are in the uk um so we just created a policy and we haven't flown i think for eight years um for business and similarly um we realized that a lot of our energy use as a business is um is actually home energy. So even if we have an office with a renewable energy tariff, where most of our energy is not actually at the office, it's at people's houses. So then we introduced an incentive for our team. Well, first of all, we asked our employees to switch their home energy and nobody did. Um, then we offered them money. Nobody, well, I think maybe one person did. Um, then we offered them a day of holiday, a day, off, a day off every year if you just switch to renewable energy at home. 
and then it took a while but everybody did um so things like that we're just trying to think about what's the 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 day-to-day -day environmental impact of just running a business um without the digital piece specifically and how can we find ways of trying to reduce that It doesn't work, you cannot. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I wanted just to add a comment uh, for you and for Jerry about growth and so on. Yesterday, at the end of our session, at the first session of Digital Forum, we had uh, five minutes about Bauhaus. Mm. Bauhaus, a uh, hundred years ago, was the idea of a new type of approach to architecture. Came after Art Fleury, eh, the, the redundancy of uh, uh, artifacts on buildings and so on. At the manifesto of our house, eh, Gropius mentioned these points, which I think are very relevant to digital today. The points of the manifesto 100 years ago concern the use of colors and shapes is important we need to minimize the use of colors and shape to the essential principle essential looking at what matters and minim minimalism no stuff which is not needed no videos when pictures are enough sobriety and saving savings of space energy time and money attention, paying attention to the geometric forms, uh, the, the colors and the forms of our digital uh, was mentioned as an example of the future Bauhaus, digital Bauhaus. The research for modernity and open and shared technologies. And the last point of that manifesto was nobody should be excluded equalitarianism. I think it's a lesson. So maybe the future is ahead of us as long as we do not forget the past. Thank you.